Welcome to this video by Perfect Scores. This is Preetinder Kaur and what we are doing in this playlist is the chemicals of life. So far we've done the structure of water and the properties of water that help it being a very important substance for life. And then we did some information about carbohydrates, proteins and lipids and especially their condensation reactions. So what we are going to do in this video is the DNA structure in detail. So that is going to be the focus. So let's get started. Now the basic structure of a DNA is the nucleotide. So I'll show you what a nucleotide is made up of. Let me go ahead and draw a diagram for that. So this is the basic layout of a nucleotide. So this over here, this is known as a phosphate group. And this ring that you can see, this is the sugar. So we call it a 5C sugar because it has 5 carbon atoms. First, second, third, fourth and fifth one is here outside the ring. So this is a 5C sugar. And in case of DNA, it is deoxyribose. And this over here is the nitrogenous base. In case of DNA, there are four nitrogenous bases, A, D, G, and C. Now, we are going to state the names of these four bases and also learn about their structure. So, A stands for adenine, T stands for thymine, G stands for guanine, and C stands for cytosine. So these are the four important bases and now let's go ahead and do the structures of, this, of these four bases so that you can understand the differences between them. So let me go ahead and draw the structure. So this over here in the yellow color is a structure of adenine. The second base that you can see in blue color is guanine. So as you can see adenine and guanine, both of them are known as double ring bases. And another word that we use for both of them is purines. So adenine and guanine are purines, double ring bases. The base that you can see in green color, this is thymine. And this base that you can see in the purple color, this is cytosine. Now thymine and cytosine are both single ring bases because they've got just one ring and there is a name that we give to these ones that is pyrimidines so out of the four bases two are purines and two are pyrimidines now let's see how the DNA nucleotides they are linked together by covalent bonds into a single strand now this is a structure of how DNA nucleotides are linked together. So why I've put 5 is because the fifth carbon is over here at this place. I hope you remember we talked about the carbons 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So the fifth carbon is over here. That's why it's called the 5 strand. This is the phosphate group. This is the, nucleo the nitrogenous base. And this is the sugar, the deoxyribose sugar. And then it is connected to another nucleotide again and this is known as a phosphodiester bond this bond over here it is known as a phosphodiester bond so this is the three side because this is the third carbon and this is the five side now the nucleotides they're linked into one single strand via a condensation reaction The phosphate group which is attached to the 5 fifth carbon of the sugar, it joins with a hydroxyl group that is OH which is attached to the third carbon of the sugar. Now this results in a phosphodiester bond between the two nucleotides and there is formation of a water molecule. So that is also one of the results. 
successive condensation reactions between nucleotides will give you a longer single strand of DNA. But how is a DNA double helix actually formed? So two polynucleotide chains of DNA, they are held together. So two chains of DNA, they are held together by hydrogen bonds. between the complementary base pairs. Now the complementary base pairs, what are these base pairs? Remember in DNA, adenine always pairs with thymine via two hydrogen bonds. And guanine always pairs with cytosine via three hydrogen bonds. So this is known as complementary base pairing. Now in order for the bases to be facing each other and able to pair, the strands run in opposite direction. That means one strand runs in this direction, the other runs in this. That means they are anti-parallel. And as the polynucleotide change, it lengthens, it becomes longer. The atoms that make up the molecule arrange themselves in an optimal energy configuration. And this position, the optimal energy configuration, it gives a position of least resistance. That is why the double-stranded DNA, it twists and becomes a double helix with approximately 10 to 15 bases per twist. So this is why the DNA helix is it's in the form of a helix and why it's curved like a staircase. So let's go ahead and draw a simple diagram of the molecular structure of DNA showing both the chains. So let me draw that. So this is one example of the molecular structure of DNA. And these white color bonds that you can see, these are the hydrogen bonds. And by now you would be able to recognize where is the sugar, where is the nitrogenous base, which is over here. And this is the phosphate group. So you can see this strand is moving in this direction. This is moving in this direction. That is why we call them anti-parallel strands. So this is the structure of the DNA that you need to be aware of. And that is what we will be covering in this video because in the next video we are going to take up a very important topic which is DNA replication. So that is all for this video. I hope you were able to understand all of it. And don't forget to visit our website perfect-scores.com for more information. And uh, you can share and like our page at facebook.com and send any valuable suggestions or feedback at this Gmail address. So thank you so much for watching this video.